Namaskar. My name is Nishal Utra and today I'm going to take an excerpt of the book written by Chitra Banerjee Devakarani, The Palace of Illusions. And this is a narration by Panchali. So here we go. The bards sing of what occurred when Dushashan took hold of my sari to pull it away, exposing my nakedness to all eyes. How more and still more fabric appeared until he was exhausted with tugging. Was it a miracle? I don't know. I had shut my eyes. My body would not stop trembling, though I willed it to. I clutched my sari in my feast as though I could save myself with that futile gesture. The worst shame a woman could imagine was about to befall me. I, who had thought myself above all harm, the proud and cherished wife of the greatest kings of our time. Now they sat frozen as I struggled with the shashan. The sorcery's head said, When in great trouble, rest your mind on someone who loves you. I tried to call up Thari's face, but all I could imagine was how enraged and helpless he'd feel when he heard of what had been done to me. Then maybe, because there was no one else who could help, I thought of Krishna. He owed me nothing. We were not related. Perhaps that's why I could fix my mind on him without being swept away by the anger that arises from expectation. I thought of his smile, the way it would appear on his face for no reason. The sounds of the courtroom faded, the sashans, grunts, the whispers of the watches. Suddenly I was in a garden. There were swans in a lake, a tree that arched above, dropping blue flowers, the sound of water falling as though the world had no end. The wind smelled of sandalwood. Krishna sat beside me on a cool stone bench. His glance was bright and tender. No one can shame you, he said, if you don't allow it. It came to me in a wash of amazement that he was right. Let them stare at my nakedness, I thought. Why should I care? They are not I should be ashamed for shattering the bounds of decency. Krishna nodded. He took my hands. At his touch, I felt my muscles relax, my face open. He smiled and I prepared to smile back. <sighs> Is the desire for vengeance stronger than the longing to be loved? As I spoke, my hand slipped from Krishna's. His face wavered, dimming. I opened my eyes. I was still closed. And Dusashan was on the floor in a swoon. I stepped over him and spoke to the assembly in a voice like cracking eyes. All of you will die in the battle that will be spawned from this day's work. Your mothers and wives will weep far more piteously than I have wept. This entire kingdom will become a charnel house. Not one korva here will be left to offer prayers for the dead. All that will remain is the shameful memory of today what you try to do to a defenseless woman. Behind me, I heard Bhim and Arjun pronouncing oaths of revenge and the blind king's anxious entreaties as he called my name, begging me to retract my curse. Inside me, Krishna's face dissolved in a red haze, but I could not, would not stop my words. I lifted up my long hair for all to see. My voice was calm now because I knew that everything I said would come to pass. I will not comb it, I said, until the day I bathe it in Korva's blood.